There may be a slight repetition just for the sake of covering the aspects specific to the conditions now. So biliary atresia is the most frequent and severe cause of uh, neonatal cholestasis. And biliary atresia is basically an ascending inflammatory process of the biliary tree, leading to progressive obliterative scarring of the extrahepatic and intrahepatic bile ducts. And this leads eventually to biliary cirrhosis. So most of these babies uh, die by three to four years untreated. Only early surgical treatment can stall the biliary cirrhosis, and that's where rapid identification is important. The exact etiopathogenesis is unknown. Environmental factors, infection, and genetic factors may play a role. It can be related to autoimmune events expedited by microchimerism in the mother. And there are infections like CMVDO virus, which are shown. And some people hypothesize that sclerosing cholangitis or sclerosing uh, diseases are a spectrum with biliary atresia. So some of them develop the severe type, some of them develop it later. The fact that the conjugated bilirubin can be raised in the first bilirubin screening in such babies indicates that the onset of the problem may be antenatal in many of them. So infants present with conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, as we said, uh, depigmented or pale stool, colored urine, and your investigation would show conjugated jaundice, elevated liver transaminase, including GGT. Abdominal ultrasound performed early will show you the features uh, which we discussed. Uh, the triangular periportal sign is fairly sensitive and specific if you do with an expert. And uh, pre and postprandial ultrasonography facilitates the gallbladder contraction as well or the absence of it. Uh, obstructive conditions like cholidocal cyst, Carolis disease, gallstone, or inspissated bile or biliary cast can be seen on ultrasound as well. The diagnostic gold standard is percutaneous liver biopsy followed by intraoperative cholangiogram if it is inconclusive or you need to go in for the surgery. And liver biopsy leads to the diagnosis in 80 to 95% of the cases. Histology we discussed already and you see inflammatory infiltrates around the bile duct, portal tract fibrosis, accumulation of the bile with bile plugs and bile duct proliferation. ERCP may serve as a reliable and safe diagnostic tool, but again, technical difficulties will be there. And as HIDA scan is associated with high sensitivity but lacks specificity, so it's not often done. So the incidence is 1 in 8,000 live births, and in US, for example, it's 400 cases per year. It's the most frequent indication for liver transplantation in children. And we have three different types, the isolated type, which is 80% of cases, they have a jaundice-free interval after birth, and so you may not pick them up. The syndromic forms may be associated with polysplenia or situs inversus, and these babies are frequently jaundiced, and the initial test itself may show a raised uh, conjugated bilirubin. And you have the cystic form in 5%. The etiology, as we discussed, is not clear. Viruses may contribute toxins, immune systems. And Kasai procedure is crucial before uh, four months, so diagnosed before two months. Uh, between 45 and 90 days, the prognosis gets worse as you delay. And if you don't treat it, cirrhosis develops by six months. And as I said, early death is common. These are the three types pathologically. So we have the type 1 in 5%, type 2 in 2%. Type 1 has a gallbladder which contains bile. And we often have the common bile duct, but the intrahepatic uh, ducts are not developed. And in type 2, we have a visible uh, Patent ductus at the porta, but beyond that, it is atritic. And the gallbladder is atritic as well. And the commonest type is a type 3, where uh, very fine intrahepatic uh, ducts are seen, but apart from that, nothing else. So, this is a type where you do the uh, porta entrostomy and hope that it works, but it may not work in many of these babies as well. The reason we do it early for the treatment is because it can be a progressive condition, and in the early stages, the response is better. So the hepatoportoenterostomy to enable the biliary drainage is the first line of the treatment. The success rate is closely associated with the age at the time of the surgery. If it is performed within the first 60 days, 70% of the babies will establish bile flow. After 90 days, less than 25%. And so if the bile flow is not established, the progress to cirrhosis will continue unless you do a liver transplantation. And by uh, native liver, we mean the number of babies without the liver transplantation. So if uh, surgery is done within the first two months and it's not been still achieved, and you can monitor the success by normalization of conjugated bilirubin and AST two months after the surgery. This is to illustrate how the Kasai procedure is done. So this is the absent bile duct. 
for the drainage into the second part of duodenum. So you're basically transecting the intestine here, connecting the proximal end of the intestine into the portal, uh, portal hepatis area, hoping that the bile ducts which are atritic start draining into it. And the duodenum is anastomote side, side on to this portion of the intestine. So that's why it's called a row and y photo